post that on my personal page all the time? Does it is should it be different from the group or whatever? No, it's it's just something with the phone. If so. it does it again, maybe it's not meant to be. Yeah, well, we're we're live now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes they kinda, sometimes they don't like that, kinda, but we're live. We are live now. Mm -hmm. Let me let me get. My calendar so I have that anyways well since we know all each other we don't have to introduce each other mm -hmm. um so you want me to start over yeah because we're, we're rolling okay. <laughs> at this point okay so uh this is a new little group uh we're for every second Sunday of each month free for anyone to join us and um uh, to introduce flower essences to the greater population. They are a very ancient healing modality, um, but very unknown, very, very subtle. So uh, it was very, it was well known in Germany for a long time um, because the student of Edward Bach, a guy from Great Britain that introduced flower essences to the greater medical community a hundred years ago, 120 years ago, and his student was a German and she wrote several books and so it got introduced into Germany when I was there uh, 30, 35 years ago and stuff. And so it was popular there because it didn't have any side effects. So every doctor had them on their desk and every veterinarian had them on a desk. The Humane Society swore by it and, um, and so it was something that was sellable cost money, nobody believed in it, yet it had absolutely an effect. And, um, but the medical community was very well aware of that. Um, all they had to do is create a little bit more fear and people went back to regular medicine to kill themselves. Anyways, um, anyway, so we are talking a little bit about flower essences and, and uh, how uh, the essences that are made in accordance with the rhythm, with the calendar rhythm, uh, how they can enhance our, our daily life and um, uh, we'll do some readings and uh, that is fun for everybody where everybody can um, has to supposed to have a clear question because I can't answer you know multiple things for the group but anyway clear question and um, and then pull some cards and we'll see what shows up um, the first thing I would like everyone to do is to, um, write a release, meaning I'll get you little pieces of paper and pins and you write just maybe one sentence or so of something that you want to release and you'll make it, you make them pieces small enough to, uh, <clears throat> to burn so that we don't create a house fire just a just a one thing and uh, what I do is usually I just take a piece of paper and write that on so we're releasing fear we're releasing certain ailments we're releasing certain addictions we're releasing uh, negative thought patterns grumpy things um, all sorts of things that we hold against ourselves and against yeah, against others anything that just kind of sits on us like a lump in our stomach and doesn't have any shouldn't be there and uh, things that we can't let go of that we have trouble with letting go of any of those things and since fire is lighter than air closer to spirit than air the fire is the one that takes it to the spirits and gets our gets our um yeah right on this right on there i think um gets our prayers heard now every prayer is heard and every prayer is answered uh depending 
on how we formulate it, we're sending out a positive energy with it or a negative one. And like attracts like. So whatever negative we send out, if we if we send a lot of grumpiness out towards a person and withhold that emotion laced with it, we'll get that same energy back. Not maybe the same thing, but the same way. So writing releases is a training in staying looking at the subject in a different way. You know, as soon as we turn our attention to a different outlook, we can change what the subject, the answers to that. It's very uh, difficult at some times. Sometimes it takes years, sometimes it takes decades <laughs> to get over our initial idea of how it's supposed to be. But then like Einstein said, you know, um, if it doesn't work and you try it over and over the same way and it still doesn't work, that's called insanity. So it's really about approaching something different. And then it's always, you know, we have to, the wisdom to know what we can change and what we cannot change is truly a gift that we have to school because uh, we're, we're trying to change things that maybe in that moment aren't changeable. And uh, we're not trying to change things because we're we're stuck in a belief system that we're actually able to change if we just change it and that's kind of the practice why we're here everything else is just by work anyway um So, so, and then I fold this thing up, little tiny, as tiny as possible, kind of like, like this, and then we're just going to, um, we're just going to each burn this thing. You want to come over, hon? Make it, did you make it tiny? Anyway, it's yours to burn. Make it smaller. And then it can go in here. No, no, no. No, no. Where's the... Do you have this thing in your hand? With that thing, you hold it in the flame. You need to burn it. No. Not just throw it away. Don't burn yourself. Don't drop it on the floor. Don't drop it in the candle. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. <laughs> so did my life. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> you always do exactly what I'm saying. Okay, Kelly. I can't do. I'm just. I'm just doing this. I'm just filming. You didn't? No, because I. Okay. One handed here, so. So while we're doing this, we should maybe introduce ourselves. Um, Kelly, if you want to point to Jack, this is uh, my husband, Jack. Wave at the camera, Perfect. Jack. <laughs> I'm Isa, and this is Mary and Mike. And then you have to... Oh, and I'm Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off camera. <laughs> oh, you just turn the camera on? I, I know, I just... Prefer not to. <laughs> oh, must be a male thing. <laughs> if nothing else, ladies, this is this is what not to do. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just don't don't let, it. Don't yeah. let it's all right. No. Perfect. There. Okay, so now we got the the rough part out of the out of the road. So, and when you're by yourself. You can repeat your release for yourself and say it out loud. Uh, there's no limit in how much and how many times or whatever you want to do this or can't do this. I just do it as a regular thing in my daily ritual, mostly. Part of a ritual is that we're calling in helpers for our, this is one of 
Okay, let's nice get this. We're calling in the helpers. We're calling in the magic. We're and the magic was used to be known as science. And until science kind of uh, started to move away from all the natural things and made it a difference. And magic was powerful and power was not something that people were afraid of. People were afraid of power. So they had to split this up. But the original word for science is actually magic. So there's nothing. It's just everything that is uh, possible for us on this planet is just amazing. And so it's magical. So we're calling the spirits in to support us. We're calling the elementals and the elements. Uh, fire and then water and earth. A little bit of earth. And the feather represents the air. And uh, fire is the closest element to uh, spirit. Spirit is the element that binds everything together. And spirit is what we consider our six sins, our um, body, brain, our solar plexus, our intuition. That's what binds all the elements together. And we do have uh, heavy influence. We influence the elements on this planet. And we've been, not been taught that we have any influence on it. And yes, we do. The water, for example, is in every body of this this planet and in every human being, every animal, and uh, the body of water carries our emotions. So the upheaval we see on the planet right now has to do with 9 billion people being in emotional upheavals. And we're seeing it wherever we see it. Um, Earth is moving forward in its evolutionary process and so are we if we choose so. And uh, uh, so Earth is currently balancing itself from all the things that were created in the last 50, 90,000 years. And uh, so therefore we have um, areas um, that are inundated with fire, inundated with water, inundated with storms, uh, volcanic activity. The Earth is shaking and balancing itself. It's not against the people that live there. It's not their fault that they happen to live there. It's just Earth itself balance itself. And where we are at any given moment in our life has to do with our expectations and our anticipations because we have the gift to not step into dangerous situations if it's not for our higher good. Uh, we know intuitively sometimes we turn around and say, no, I'm going to go out of the house today. I don't know exactly why, but it just doesn't feel good. Uh, trusting our intuition is, is a key, key factor. It's not always convenient, and it doesn't always sound very sane, and uh, it's, it's not easy sometimes to explain, yet the more we trust it, the more we're going to serve ourselves. Um, does it prevent everything in our life? Absolutely not, because you were here to grow and to learn. We have things to balance out. We have things, yeah, belief systems that we hold tight on and are not serving us. So we get presented with situations to overcome that, to look at it in a different way, to change our perception, perspective. That's the whole key about things that happen to us. Uh, nothing happens out of nowhere. Nothing is... Um, we're not victims to any of those things. No matter what it is, it is not an accident, even though we might call it that way. It is not. It's something where we had blocked energy, where we didn't move forward, or or something positive out of the blue where we actually did follow our intuition and did follow our synchronicities and things can uh, come together in a super nice little way. Um, and quite often, and the, the more we go into Revelation now, into the Aquarian Age, into this last Aquarian Age, the more uh, those veils are going to be lifted, the more our intuition is going to come forth, and the more we can actually uh, use it. It's going to get easier if we choose so. And that's the promise that was made, that we're, we are all going, to be, we signed up for it, so we're going to go there. Um, we're not going to get dragged. Everybody has free will. And um, how hard or how easy we make it for ourselves is up to us.
phone does not no. ring for an entire week. <laughs> That's always the way. It has to ring right back. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Anyway, so what I prepared today, today is a Leo day according to the lunar calendar. Leo is a fire sign. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it is usually warmer on those days than on other days. It feels warmer even though the temperatures are wintry out there. It still feels warm. Uh, if it's the same temperature on a, on a water day, it might feel more damp and more moist or airy. And, um, Leo governs our heart. That's the predominant thing. Um, heart and blood vessels. And the heart is an organ in itself, has its own, almost its own body brain. So the heart, the old saying is a broken heart, is that the heart can actually break. And the heart can really disintegrate if we're really strangling it. We can really have a massive impact on our own physical heart by our belief systems and what, what we hold for or against us. Um, there is a balance in everything. The saying, you know, um, I have my heart goes out to you is something we should not do because we shouldn't give our own personal heart away. You can give love, you can give sympathy, and you can big, give yeah, understanding, you do not give your heart away. The, the um, and yeah. some people do that. They give and give and give and give and then they're surprised, they're depleted. And they get sick too, because they're giving of their own substance. And quite often these people get so addicted to giving that they don't care whether you want it or not. And then it's pushy. It's not even nice or kind anymore. Um, the majority of so-called missionaries do not ask whether you want their gift or not. They just give it anyways. And they push it on you. It's been the old way, you know. My way is the best one and you're going to get this, whether you like it or not, because I think it's a good thing. And, um, and to these days, we have this still. Um, plenty everywhere. And it's usually just a distraction from who we are, or looking at ourselves, what's wrong with us? What do we have to kind of clear up in ourselves? Um, you know, no, I'm just too busy. I'm just going to help everybody else. So I don't have to look at myself. Um, so the heart is a, is a really, and that's why we have so much heart disease right now in this country. The heart chakra is opening for the longest time. The energies rose from the, the base chakra all the way to the heart. And then it got stuck. The connection with the divine was kind of subdued due to belief systems. So the energy of love got stuck in dogmatism. And we've seen that for hundreds of years. So now that the, that the gateways are open, all of a sudden the heart responds, blows and overreacts. And some people even think they have a heart attack, even though the doctors can't find anything. It's just because the chakra of the heart is actually finally coming online and really opening up both ways, front and back. Mm -hmm. um, um, because people were afraid of what's coming from the back, you know, being getting ambushed, they, they quite often shut their chakra system down in the back, put a barrier against it. So the free flow of energy in and out in our chakra system wasn't given. And that's where this whole tradition comes from about clearing chakras and realigning chakras and things. It's not that the chakras are, are sick, it's just we've been blocking them with belief systems. Mm -hmm. So it's really opening up and, and what the opening means is just we just need to have trust and faith that there's nothing coming in that, that hurts us. See, that's the whole thing. It's not about doing something. It's about allowing the things to happen and trusting it that it's for our our benefit and uh, when we really look into how much we trust those things it's um, it takes growing it mm. takes doing it takes um, having the courage to go there because we all grew up with don't do this and don't do that and don't believe that and protect yourself here protect yourself there and you know and all those rules and regulation if you're different from somebody else and all these kind of things made us kind of close down and uh, that affected our energy flow between the soul, which is our translator for the higher energies and higher wisdoms, and, uh, and the physical and non-physical forms that absorb these things.
the body itself is just a a uh, barometer for where we're blocking ourselves emotionally and mentally so any pain that comes in our body isn't created in the body it's created in a in a belief system that we're resisting and that express itself in a certain body part as pain or as disease this is not being at ease with ourselves um, we're denying ourselves the being part the human being part we all learned how to be do human doings but we're not we never learned how to be just be and really just look into ourselves so pains aren't to be driven away fought and white war against or diseases and that's the theme that the medical society has right now make war against everything but all it does it creates more war and it doesn't solve anything unless we really go look at why is my leg hurting? Why did I stub my toe? Why, you know, is is something hurting? Um, and we have in our language, we have all those associations. We just need to look for them. Um, um, you know, when people get the cold or something or the flu and they have a stuffed nose, well, they're literally, life has them stuffed up here. They had it up here. They need a break. <clears throat> in order to permit themselves the break they need to create a symptom so they have an excuse well if we have the courage to say look I just don't feel like it you know then uh, we don't need to have the flu in order to apologize for it um, anyway so the heart energy let's see there was something more in here that I about about Leo um, uh, interesting enough the uh, the the fire the element fire corresponds with the plant parts with the fruit of the plant uh, so the fruit that we can uh, digest is then when we when we take fire as the element that's closest to spirit the fruits that we take is closest to the spiritual Realm. So the nutrition that we get isn't just physical, it's really on all levels and that's why it is so critical that we don't kill the fruit before we eat it. That we don't kill the food for us as a nutritional, as a living nutritional element before we digest it. And in the last 50 years everything got treated, bombarded, microwaved, cooked to pieces and uh, killed. Literally, literally, you still get the, the calories, but you don't get any nutrition. So as we rise as spiritual beings, as we learn how to be, to remember who we truly are, it is critical for our well-being to consume as much raw and natural food as we can. It doesn't mean that you eat raw meat, but, you know, uh, as much fruit and vegetables in a raw state as we can. Um, so the heart, the back, the diaphragm, which is part of, has to do with the breathing, circulation, arteries, and sensory organs. So the sensory organs is, is part of this whole system. So the heart is the biggest part of the solar plex, complex of the, of the body brain, um, together with the stomach, with, uh, kidney and liver, and, um, the the second chakra, the uh, the reproductive organs, all these this stuff, the stomach and intestinal tract, all these inner organs are a big part of our well-being. And we have this kind of saying too, you know, this is laying on my stomach or this things like that. We we need to take those expressions serious because uh, the reason for the stomach ache isn't the food we ate, not necessarily the physical food. Quite often, it's the emotional food that we've been accumulating. <clears throat> we have another guest. Very good.
He comes from Igloo. Is that his one? Come on in, come on in, welcome. Let's see. Where would you like to sit that's comfortable for you? I'll find a place. <laughs> I'll find a place. That looks comfortable right there. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Is that okay with you? Sure. Sorry for being late. I just haven't been here before. No. Nope. Uh, and I don't even know who you are. My name is Diane Newham. I uh, live in Igloo, South Dakota. How did you find us? On the internet. Someone said, you need to go here. Really? You need to do this. So I put that I'm going. And I had my husband aligned yesterday with going. Because I'm really never safe to do this by myself. But all of a sudden he went out of alignment today and I said, I made a commitment to myself to heal. That's why I'm here. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And he didn't do this, by the way, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, okay. This is part of my healing. I did it for myself. So. This is Kelly. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm nice doing, Jack. we're doing Facebook Live. Ah, okay. Okay. Mike and Mary, yes. Lou and my Custer. I'm Isa. Yeah. Thank you for, for coming. Wonderful. Bless you. Thank you for being here. Uh, we started with the, with calling the spirits and the elements in. We started the fire. And I was just about to explain flower essences and the essence of the day. Why don't you I don't give... know, have you heard anything about flower essences? Yeah. Why don't you give her a piece of paper and let her put... Do a release. Do a release. Yes, you're right. We all wrote just a sentence or so on a little tiny piece of paper and put it in the flame to release it. Oh, wait, I got that already done. The release. Oh, very good. Somewhere with me, I've got a thing that's written on a piece of paper to release. Yes, but we do need to burn it. <clears throat> okay, I can't find it. It's, but I know what I want to release. There you go. Write it again on that little piece of paper. Thank you. Just a sentence or so, it's not the... No, nope. it's, it, it's just three letters. Very good. You know what, folded, wrote it, whatever. I assume you want me to burn that so you yeah. don't have to get oh, up? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Bless you. Whoops. Now Isa will burn down the house. <laughs> there we go. No, just a string. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's just quick go through this before I give it out. Um, flower essences are a very ancient healing method. And uh, after I had cancer, I and I was introduced to flower essences a long time ago in Germany. And I was working with them for a long time, but after when I was in my recovery, I started actually seeing all the flowers that we were surrounded by, really. And I started making essences of the of the wildflowers here, eighty all together, and uh, and then I created another phase was starting a garden. So I got into more of the um, uh, almanac wisdom and uh, started writing calendars accordingly and the moon calendars that the, our organs and our bodies are influenced um, or can be can be favored certain things can be favored on certain days 
and the the old people uh, found out that if they observed the star systems and the zodiac signs that they could actually tell the day qualities and the relationships to our body and so according to the moon calendar we're governed by leo today leo as a fire day governs the heart and which is which is the the organ right now governing the heart chakra that is opening up worldwide and it, it sends uh, some people into tailspins because the, the, the heart is reacting and overreacting physically kind of um, excited and people get nervous and go to the doctor and think something is wrong and all there is is finally that connection that that we're supposed to have to the to all the chakras throughout the body are finally opening up and uh, uh, the organ heart can have moments of overreaction to that it doesn't mean that something is physically wrong it just it's starting to wake up and so i made essence blends out of my flowers for the different uh, days for the in accordance with the different zodiac signs so i have 12 different blends that can be uh, either taken uh, just one drop holds the same energy as 10 drops so it's not how much it's how many times if there's something in that particular area that needs special tending uh, it's well worth to support that organ during those two three days especially well um, um, so today has been uh, Leo and I thought I'm gonna I put um, this is all homeopathic willard water. That's the water that I was told to use for all my blends so I don't have to have chemicals and stuff in it. And uh, we're just going to put a drop in every little. And everybody gets a drink. Jack. And. For you and then there was another and Kelly's is here <coughs> so blessings to all of ourselves and to our hearts and for our well-being thanks for coming just water physically just water. So what can I ask what flowers or things or what makes up this essence? Um I'd have to look in my book. Okay, I just I don't really know. It's a it's a, it's usually a mixture of seven to ten flowers. Oh, okay. Whatever tests for them. When I sit down and test them with the pendulum, ask for the supportive essences to go in there. Um I write them down, I put them in a bottle, and I can't remember two minutes later what's in there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have to look it up. <laughs> um, um, when you said the number 80, is that the number of different flowers yeah. that you, combinations? Yes. That you no, it's just the different, different the individual flowers. Flowers, okay. uh, flowers and, and trees that I made essence from. Okay. So, the way... Um, the way I was taught to make essences is um, you can make you don't you don't have to put them in a bottle, so you can make an essence for yourself when you go on a hike. Okay, you have a little bit of water with you. You have something to expose the water to sunlight. That's the key because the sunlight is the catalyst that binds the the the, the essence from the flower head or from the flower with the water. The, the water doesn't take on physically the essence, but it, it, uh, it is a carrier element for that particular energy. Just like electricity flow is not bound to water chemically, but it, it gets carried by water. And so this essence, so not to, of course, the waters of this planet uh, um, would theoretically hold all the essences there are because the water has been circulating around this planet forever so theoretically it holds all the essences that are are in the water what makes it 
unique and special is our personal intention behind it. That's the power we've been given uh, to influence the elements, the elementals on this planet. Our personal power has to do with our intention. And that's why the creation in our lives is so critically bound to our intentions. And when um, and we've been getting very lax with that, it got, where we've been taught in a negative way and to harp on negative things and to feel sorry for ourselves and to, to chastise other people. All those negative emotions are creative powers. We send them out we, and we get back what we send out. So the schooling in these days, which always been a schooling in the in the uh, in the realms of spirit and and people that knew about it, but the schooling these days to to move on in revelation is truly to school ourselves to to look at what our what we are spending our time with, how we're spending our time with, and whether there isn't another way to look at things. If we can look at the ailments that, that plague us as healing and gifts for what they are, as guidance, as pointers to where we're jeopardizing ourselves, we have power to heal ourselves. Our bodies are self-healing. They were created to live a thousand years happy and healthy. They were their their energy bodies. What what shortens our lifespan is our belief system. Truly. We've been taught life is so long and you have to look that way at a certain age and you have to be that way at a certain age and if you want your kids to work for you, you have to get sick and you know if you don't want to work so hard anymore, then you have to come up with an excuse. We've been taught those things and it's a little different in every society and, and that's when you can actually see how much influence we have on our bodies. There was just on Facebook a one thing there. They have all sorts of silly stuff there. But anyways, there was a whole village somewhere uh, where the women all had extremely long hair. And you could just tell, you could just, when you know how we influence ourselves, you can just tell that this whole village, the traditions in that village were always feeding this particular beauty concept. <laughs> or you have villages where the people get extremely old. They're not genetically different. They're not different from us. They don't do any different things. But their belief system says you can get old. And, uh, and that's, that's where this all comes from. And uh, we're starting to learn. And in our society, we've been taught, unless you're sick, you're not a good person. You know. Um, it's in, unless you or unless you work hard. Uh, and and uh, that's, that's the way I've been told, you know. We consider, you know, God didn't say anything about working hard and he didn't say anything about doing. He said about being. You are a being. You be. Be, not do. That doesn't mean you never do anything because whatever your favor, whatever your love, your passion is, then we don't consider it work, especially not hard. When we label something hard work, it's against our own soul. And then we need to look at it if there is no way for us to embrace life in a more gentle, loving way. And, uh, and it's time now, because times are going really fast now. And uh, what we send out in the morning, we will, we will harvest in the afternoon. So if we wake up with really negative thoughts and a real um, hazardous idea about ourselves and where we're at, and we will create scenarios <clears throat> that day that in that emphasize that that perpetuate that same energy so uh, it is so important for us to to bless that day the other day I was at the chiropractor and there was an 88 year old lady sitting next to me and she was waiting for her son to come back out and she said you know I had 10 children and one of my sons is dying from cancer but I am so blessed. We had such a blessed life. And I get in the morning, and I was told, she said, I get up in the morning and I tell myself, you can love this day and be happy, or you can be sad and hate the day. And it's all up to you. And I choose to love my day every day. 
and she exuded that. I mean, she exuded that beauty and that life, and she looked about 15 years younger than she was, and she was all, oh, well, she said, oh, I'm all healthy. My son is in there. I don't need to go. And it's all her belief system. That doesn't mean that we endure pain, kind of like bite our teeth, you know, if I ignore it, it's going to go away, because that pain is there for a reason. And uh, it is not there to punish us. It's there to get our attention to something where we're fighting ourselves. Uh, and everything is healable. Anyway, so that's what I was going to do today. And that's what I'm going to do with every group is whatever, whatever uh, the zodiac sign is that's ruled for that day. That's what we're going to talk about on that day. Now, Leo days... Uh, besides governing the heart, um, let's see here, where is that day? Right now, right now we're in the waning moon phase. We just had, we just had a lunar eclipse, uh, on Friday it was full moon. Lunar eclipses are, uh, kind of like, um, rebooting the energy computer. It is a day where, where our systems, everything that we took in from one eclipse to the next energetically gets kind of rebooted and put in alignment. And because our and our brain is not part of it. We, we will never understand this from our brain part because our brain gets circumvented. It goes through our body brain. Our physical energetic body and bodies are in physical and non-physical bodies getting um, um, getting bounced up. The DNA strands are coming online and our brain, our ego is not part of it. So it doesn't matter how much we try to put it in words and understand it. it it's just only going to be theoretical because uh, energetically we can feel it. Our feelings will show us, our intuition will show us, and our brain will not understand it. And so it's more about following our guts than our logic. So the full moon uh, uh, was in Cancer still, in the water sign, and uh, it just switched to Leo today, and um, governing the, the heart and the back. And uh, a lot of people that carry too much for other people aren't just affected in the heart, they're affected in their back. That's usually the first thing that hurts mm -hmm. when we're carrying more than we personally should. And I'm not necessarily meaning physically, but energetically. Um, there isn't much going on on this day. On Leo days, it's it's a day where we really need to look inside rather than do a lot. That's one of the few days where, they're, where the waning or the waxing moon doesn't make any difference in the activity level. The only thing that's actually good for is cutting your hair. <laughs> But that's our, and um, and that's about it. So Leo days are in general um, um, days where where our activity level um, isn't uh, naturally very high. It's a warm day too, you know, and and really in summer it's going to get really hot. So it's more of a heightened day, anyways. So. What time is it? What, how much time do we have? 2.53. 2.53. So what I wanted to do today is, um, and since we're just a few people, if you agree, and since we're having somebody new here, I would like to offer a healing to her. And uh, I'm not sure whether you read this. I, uh, You can sit wherever you sit. I will sit in front of you and just offer an energy healing. However much you take or not take is a personal will and it again doesn't go through the brain. It's not me shoving anything on you. That would be, I'm just opening the energy channels to, to let this happen. Okay, and at, that, at this point I'm going to stop. So you know. I'm going to stop for the, for the healing okay. stuff. So we're going to wrap that up. So. And since in the group the energy is much higher than anywhere else, I'd ask everyone to send supportive, loving energy into this healing. 
not for some spectacular, you know, whatever, curiosity outcome, oh my God, that kind of thing. Just as much love as we can to send to any person because we all have our stumbling stocks. Every one of us has our tripping stones where we move over and any support we can ask and give and get is, is appreciated on any level, on any level. What you send out, you get back. So anyone, whatever we send out, we get at least threefold, and in these times, more like thousandfold back. So sending out is uh, is uh, genuinely sending out always comes back to us. It may um, it comes back usually in divine timing, which of course we don't have access to again. <laughs> um, I'm gonna need one of those chairs, Hans, before you sit down.